Hello. In this video, I'm going to take you through completing an exercise in CyberDojo using Test Driven Development, or TDD for short. The exercise I'm going to be doing is the Leap Years exercise, and I'm going to be doing it in C++ using the Google Test Framework. TDD is an iterative and incremental process of developing your unit tests at the same time as your code. Importantly, you create the tests before writing your code. When practicing TDD, you follow the TDD cycle. You start off by writing a failing test, then run the tests to see the new one fail. You then make a very simple small change to pass the test that you've just added and all of the previous tests. Run your tests and see them all pass. You then importantly refactor to improve your code. So this can be either improving your code or improving your tests run all the tests again and see them all pass and then depending on whether you've completed the task or not you either add another test or you're done so when you start a carter in cyber dojo you're presented with an example test which is an example from hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy asking what's the answer to the life the universe and everything and it expects the result of 42. the default for this is for the test to fail so if I hit test, it will send the code off to the server, build it, run the tests and tell me that it's actually getting 42. So I'm actually getting 54, whereas I'm expecting the answer of 42. So we can go and look for the reason of this, which is going to be this, that the actual is returning 6 times 9, whereas we actually want to return 6 times 7. If I hit test again with that, I will see that my tests now pass. So this test is not actually anything to do with the exercise that I'm going to be doing and these file names aren't particularly appropriate either. So first of all I'm going to do a little bit of tidy up by renaming the files and then create my first test for my actual leap years exercise. So first of all I'm going to rename the source file and I'm going to call it leap years and the header file that goes along with it and finally the test file keeping the tests bit and then I'm also going to need to just correct the includes and the final bit of tidy up is the include guards currently have the wrong name So now I've done that bit of tidy up, I'm going to hit test again and just make sure I haven't broken anything and the code still compiles. Good, so it still compiles. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be doing the leap years uh, exercise and the actual exercise um, wants us to create a function which will return true or false to minute whether the integer which we pass it is a leap year or not. The rules for leap years is one which is divisible by four but not otherwise divisible by 100, unless it's also divisible by 400. And then down at the bottom, we've actually got some examples of this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually delete the current test, which is in there, because that's not relevant to my exercise. So I'm gonna add a new test uh, for my leap years. And I want to check that a typical uh, common year returns false because it's not a leap year. So with this uh, test defines our test. The first parameter to the test macro is our test fixture. So it's a way of grouping all of our tests. And the second parameter is actually the test name. Google test has uh, some assertions which check the return value of uh, the function that's passed into them. So this one, I want to check that it actually returns false. So I type the wrong thing. So return false, and then I want to check that my me method, which I'm going to call, uh, is a leap year. And I'm going to use the um, example given in the instructions. So I'm going to say 2001. I want to check that that returns false. Now this obviously isn't going to build because 
we haven't actually created this function yet so I'm going to go into the header file and create it so it's a boolean return it's called is a leap here it's going to take an integer and we're going to call it year and I'm going to add the method also into here so again deleting the answer from the start point it's going to be bool And at the moment, I want to initially start off with a failing test, so I'm expecting it to return false. So I'm just going to make this return true so that it fails the test. So the reason for always starting with a failing test is to make sure that your test actually works so you have something to fail so you can change some code. It also checks that your test's actually included. Uh, if you just get a green straight away, uh, so a passing test, it could mean that your test hasn't actually been picked up by the test framework. So I'm now going to hit test. And I'm going to run into one of the common problems. So in CyberDojo, all of the compiler warnings are ramped up to the maximum that they practically can be. Uh, and one of them is that you're not allowed to have unused parameters. So in my actual code, I'm not using this parameter. So for the moment, I'm just going to delete it and then hit test again and I should get a failing test. So I get a failing test, I can see in my leap years fixture my typical common year returns false test is failing and it's failing because the actual value was true and I expected false. So now in my TDD cycle I need to make the smallest possible change to make that test pass. So the smallest possible change in this method is going to be just to make it return false. This is a technique known as sliming and it's just a way of getting going before you start adding in the actual logic. So if I hit test, it'll compile and now I've got my passing test. So the next step would be to refactor uh, but at the moment I've only got a very simple test, a very simple header file and a function which does very little. So there's not a lot to refactor at the moment. So I'll move on and add a, another test. So this time I'm going to test my leap years again. I'm going to test that a typical uh, leap year returns true. I'm going to assert true And again, I'm going to use the example from the instruction. So I'm going to say 1996. And I expect that to return true. If I hit test, that should now fail. Which it does because the function's always returning false. So I could come in here and just change this to true. And it would pass the test which I've just introduced. But what it will do is it will also fail my original test about typical common years returning false. So now I need to actually add some proper logic which will actually uh, check if it's a leap year based on what I've introduced. So the actual, these two examples are actually checking the first part of the rule. So it's checking that it's one which is divisible by four. So what I need to do is return if my year is divisible by four. So I can do that by modding it by four and checking the result is zero, zero and I need to add my parameter name back in. If I now hit test, that should pass. So again, I've now added, done a small change, added a test, done a small change, and I'm now onto my refactor step. So again, at this point, there's not really a great deal of code, so there's not a lot to refactor at the moment. So then back around the cycle, I've not finished yet, so I'm now going to test uh, that an A typical common year also returns false. And again, stealing from the examples. I'm going to use 1900 
and that should be my test. Hit the test button. And it fails. So this test is adding in the next bit about it's not otherwise divisible by a hundred. So what I want to do is add in a check if it is divisible by 100. So I'm going to say if it's it's only leap year if it's divisible by 4 and it's divisible by 100, which can just be year mod 100. Hit test. And again, I've added done a small change. So now I've seen all my tests pass and I'm on the refactoring stage. So in this one, the tests, there's not really a lot to refactor in the tests, but the code, uh, I find this usually quite difficult to read when I have lots of um, operators, which I can't really tell what's going on. So I like to add some brackets around just to make it a little bit easier to read. And then as I've done a change, I'm gonna run the tests again and they should still pass. Which they do, good. So, Again, I've still not finished yet. I've still got another um, rule to actually add in a test for, which is unless they're also divisible by 400, which is our atypical leap years. So add a test. And I'm going to add in the year 2000, which was a leap year, and hit test, and that should fail, which it does. So now I need to go back and add some code to do that. So what I actually want to check the rule uh, is that unless it's also divisible by 400. So I want to say is that it's that or uh, if it's divisible by 400, which is mod 400 equals equals zero. And then hit test. And as we've got the um, compiler warnings ramped right up, it's advised me to add some extra brackets. So I shall do that. And hit test again. And that's now passed and what we've now done is we've got tests for each one of our rules.